open shot. Fate of the universe on the line, or the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. You better hit it. I want Bungo. Yeah, we're taking a look at the Bungo again today. This ship is quickly becoming my favorite in the entire game. I'm just having so much fun with this thing. And before we start, I know basketball fans that that is not exactly how that clip was intended. Let's just pretend he had a very reasonable take in that clip. Because uh, Bungo is amazing. This spotter plane is just beautiful. If you need to hit a shot, this spotter plane on the Bungo is gonna get it for you. I have dev struck several carriers, we're gonna have a few of them in this video, but this ship consistently gives me the best damage into broadsides out of any ship in the game. Even things like Satsuma funny button, uh, we also would have Vermont. I gotta say guys, this thing feels more consistent than those two ships even. I know Vermont is a favorite of many of you, but the 40 second reload combined with sometimes wonky dispersion can make it a little bit less consistent than Bungo, at least for me. I've been enjoying Bungo a ton. Although that said, Vermont did just slap us there really good. The armor is a little bit weak on the Bungo. This ship has insane firepower. It just doesn't have the tankiness to push like I happen to be in this game. So that's okay. It's actually a good thing that it's a little bit more balanced. It's not an all out tank and has insane concealment and has overmatch and has these main guns that uh, do a ton of damage to people fairly consistently. It does need some weaknesses and certainly the hull is one of them. Also, the anti-aircraft is not gonna be very good here as well. Think of this as like a supersized Amagi that actually is gonna hit things. Uh, we definitely died in that game, by the way. <laughs> I figured I just wouldn't show that for you guys. But I've been having an amazing time with this ship. This, I think, is gonna be my favorite ship going into 2024 here in World of Warships. I really found it a little frustrating when I was testing this ship in early access or playing it when it came into early access. That's mainly down to the guns feeling a little bit weak. The thing you have to realize with Bungo is that this ship performs more like a battleship with 406 millimeter guns outside of Overmatch. Overmatch is really the only thing it has that really performs like 457s. Everything else, it's like 406s, pen, uh, shell velocity, shell damage, all that stuff. It feels a lot more like 406s to me. And it's not like every salvo you're getting dev strikes. There we go, we missed one on the GNAN there. No plane, to be fair, but still, some of those salvos, you would expect at least some damage, maybe a Citadel into them there. I have missed some shots as well. Leading is very important. Aiming properly is very important here when we have such amazing dispersion. Another carrier at 26 kilometers, and we're going for it, of course. I have to, right? That's the thing about the Bungo, is if you can get yourself in a position where, potentially, if the carrier's spotted, you have one shot to take him out, fate of the universe on the line and all that, yeah, Bungo's the one to take it, to be honest with you. Look at that dispersion. I missed. Like, that is just straight up my bad. My fault, my problem there for aiming poorly. But the dispersion didn't let us down in that one, at least. And with this plane, we have multiple attempts. That's the thing. A Satsuma gets one attempt. You pop your combat instructions, and then you have to build them back up again. This is a consumable with a pretty fast reload, and it gives you potentially five, four or five salvos. I actually haven't uh, done the math on it, but it's kind of insane to have this many attempts with this spotter plane. It's awesome. It's really, really enjoyable. There, maybe I aimed a little too high. Maybe we just got unlucky a little bit. It is a far shot, 26 kilometers. That's quite a ways away. But I think the key here is just this reload combined with these relatively consistent guns, especially with this spotter plane. A Vermont can get these dev strikes as well, certainly. It's a very powerful ship. But having that really long reload makes it a little bit more committal on each individual salvo. And if you do miss aim or you do get bad RNG, because let's be honest, it happens to everybody. Having that 40 seconds of reload to not only just have to wait for your next attempt, but to just sit there and think and stew on the fact that you got robbed by the game, at least in RNG sense, uh, that makes Bungo a little bit better to me. There we go, Conqueror again, taking a couple of Citadels. Feels very, very nice with this plane. 
Again, the shells act a little more like 406s, especially when it comes to their pen, much more like Montana guns when it comes to pen. So at longer ranges, you won't be citadeling battleships like 20 kilometers. It's pretty difficult to citadel battleships at those ranges. I've only had a few of them, and that's when I think I just got really lucky for a shell to dip below the main armor belt. Some of these battleships, like a Montana, has underneath the water still the citadel armor belt, but it's a lot weaker under the armor, under the water, sorry. So that's kind of where I can pen. But again, that's a very lucky shot to get at those longer ranges. So even though it can happen, it's not very likely. Bungo, of course, does want to be playing this mid-range. Out to maybe 16, 17 kilometers, I would trust this ship completely. Uh, longer range, of course, against carriers that do have pretty big citadels when they're broadside. Pretty nice shot here on the GNAN. Um, you probably expected that to happen. <laughs> The overpens against these light cruisers at close range. If you're a light cruiser at close range, just go broadside. You just don't take damage, at least to battleships. Then you do open yourself up to some cruisers in that, of course. But against battleships, it's tough. So you're going to see me aim a little bit too low here, actually. And that's very intentional. We need to use some of that water splash to actually get a citadel there. Unfortunately, don't actually kill him. But that's kind of the idea there. If we're just going to overpen him, if we hit him then to get any sort of citadel potential on someone, we have to have the shell hit the water first, but close enough to the ship that it still will go and hit the ship through the water, and that'll reduce the speed and uh, pen, and that'll allow us to hopefully get a citadel. It's kind of complicated and rather annoying at closer ranges against those light cruisers. We still managed to get the citadel there. Longer ranges against bigger cruisers. Yep, that's a Moskva getting dev struck off at <laughs> that kind of range. Uh, it's very good. It's very, very good for things like that. It's always going to be a threat. And because we do need to be playing a little bit closer to people, the concealment being, what, 12.2? So it's kind of ridiculous. Much like a Vermont, to be fair. Crack in there in that game. A little bit less uh, dev strikes there towards the end or massive salvo, so I did just feel like skipping through that. But if you remember, one of the main things that I was a little bit frustrated with with Bungo, or one of the things that I didn't like, was that a lot of full pens didn't result in a lot of damage. So here against this curve first, we get 22,000 damage. But that's only four full pens, two over pens worth of damage. And that's because I'm actually running heavy AP. We're going to look at the build. I teased that in yesterday's video a little bit that my build is weird. It's, <laughs> it's probably bad, but we are using heavy AP. And you might have seen Furious proc as well. So heavy AP, Furious Bungo in this uh in these videos it's working pretty well uh but you do die fairly quickly with this ship that said the armor doesn't make it that tanky anyway so even if you are taking a tank build it's gonna die relatively quickly anyway again another four pens over pen on the conqueror at range 18k those are meaningful salvos those feel good to me it's one i was shooting at things at mid to long range not getting citadels and I was getting these like 8k salvos, maybe 10k salvos into these broadsides at those ranges. That was rough. That didn't feel very good. That was one of my gripes with this ship. Broadside cruiser, taking a couple of citadels there. Feels pretty nice. Pretty fortunate there with that middle turret. Uh, last salvo there. I thought he might have angled in time. Or shells just go low. That said, we do need to aim pretty high these days. You'll notice my aim point here is overall going to be a little higher than I have in the past, just to try and guarantee some more full pens and citadels, especially when people are turning out. If they're turning out, just aim much higher than you think, and that's generally gonna be good. The uh, bugs and issues with the aiming system are probably not gonna go away, so just aim high. And here, again, aim high on a Brisbane, although our lead wasn't great. It's the other thing, you wanna lead a little more than you think as well, just cause there's some lag, let's some, let's some delay a little bit. And somehow we dev strike him by hitting the stern of his ship there. I know there is a citadel there on a, on a Minotaur hull, but pretty fortunate there to get that dev strike. I was not expecting that when I was firing that one. I think I halfway through the, the shells or through the air, I said, oh, well, I missed. Didn't lead him enough. And yet we still got it. So very lucky in that one. But a lot of these other ones haven't been. They've been very, very consistent feelings. A gear turning out broadside to us. Sometimes can be a tricky ship to deal with, although our teammates did manage to get a citadel there, so... Yeah, we'll take him out, no problem. No citadel, but we do still take him out. 
That's the important thing here. Even without Citadels now with Bungo, I'm feeling like it's going to do good enough damage. I don't feel like I need to get those Citadels to actually have a ship that is worth playing, I guess. Uh, that was kind of the main gripe, of course. Very lucky on the Kitakami there to get a few shells dispersing out of where I aimed again. Aim point's not perfect all the time uh, for me. It's, it's something that I do try, but... Uh, I do mess up sometimes, and of course, we do try and predict people as well. Kitakami is surprisingly maneuverable. Having shot at it a few times now, it's kind of shocking how maneuverable that thing actually is. Sure, it's got a giant citadel and it just dies if you hit it, but at longer ranges, it's actually surprisingly difficult to deal with. Um, just didn't quite lead that one enough, but still got some decent damage. Again, the full pen is doing decent damage. That's kind of the in important thing here to also realize towards the end of this video, that it's not just the citadels that we're relying on here. Although against a midway, we do need to aim towards the stern, at least when he's angled away like that. Otherwise, we hit the angled belt or just the deck armor and do no damage. Broadside Turpets coming in here for the last one of this, uh, last game of this video here. Spotter plane is up and, well, we're not going to get citadels, but it's 30k still. It's still 30k, right? That's the key here. Four overpens even in that salvo. Could have been a little bit better. I've had some upwards of 40k salvos into GKs at closer ranges without having uh, without having any citadels in them. And again, that was the main issue I found with this ship when dealing with ships that I couldn't citadel or wasn't getting citadels. I found it just frustratingly low damage output. Turpits angling to us a little bit more this time. Still, 22k. It's really surprising. Um, I don't know what it is. I've kind of thought maybe it's this heavy AP that's helping me feel a little more consistent, but that's only 7.5%, I think, when it comes to the extra damage you get out of your shells. So, I don't know. It's felt better than what 7.5% would say, especially with the downside of those fires, right? Here's this Monty Salvo I was talking about. We probably don't have the pen for his main belt there uh, at that range, but... Again, Montana has that little shelf or underwater citadel protection that's a little bit weaker. And I think that's what I managed to hit there. Pretty nice salvo there into the Hindenburg without the spotter plane. Uh, even without the spotter plane, the shells can do pretty well. We got really nice Sigma, 2.2 Sigma, as well as decent dispersion. It's still not the best Japanese battleship, so I've obviously have worse vertical dispersion. One of the main issues with the Yamato, for example. But uh, with the plane and the Sigma, it's going to do some nice, some really nice work. That said, I am showing you the best salvos here. This is, uh, this is meant to show you the potential best you can see out of Bungo. And there's a lot of salvos where we're not doing as much. I have tried to sprinkle a few in here, here and there, where we're doing overpans into cruisers, or you miss a little bit and then your shells go low or high and you don't do as much damage. Angled ships are, again, still a bit of a problem for this ship, but 457s mean you're going to overmatch through cruisers. Not the nicest mechanic in the world, but it does help this ship out quite a bit. And into battleships, superstructures, you can do some good damage as well. Uh, this one I got 272. That was a pretty nice game as well. Longer match, but still pretty nice. And I've been having a good time with this ship. Let's, let's take a look at the build, though. Yeah, it's more than a little bit greedy, I would say. Uh, heavy AP here giving us, again, that's 7.5%, but more fire damage kind of sucks. Furious giving us some reload, but at the expense of letting fires burn more on our ship to actually get that buff. I am taking Emergency Repair Expert as well as Concealment. Concealment's just very, very powerful here. We are trying to sit in that you know, 13 to 16 kilometer range away from people. We do want to go dark or undetected between our salvos, but also uh, we want to be pretty close to the enemy team as well to make the most out of this plane and these guns. No fire prevention. That's very risky. Not sure I recommend that, but I have been trying more battleships without it uh, these days because I'm getting this general sense that there's not a lot of situations where fire prevention would allow me to live where if I didn't have fire prevention, I would be dead. A lot of the times I'm just dead either way if I've overcommitted and fire prevention isn't gonna save me in a lot of those, but it does mean it's a little bit trickier to uh, position your ship and that balancing act of being close but not too close gets even more difficult without fire prevention. So probably still a good skill to take. 
Adrenaline Rush, of course, and then Consumable Specialist, getting us to that plane a little bit quicker. Notice I'm actually not taking Gun Feeder anymore. I was pretty frustrated again with that full pen damage, not really doing a lot, us struggling to deal with angled battleships. So then I would just swap over to the HE before. You notice I didn't really shoot a lot of HE at all in this ship. And that's because I haven't been. I just have been trusting these main guns a lot more. So my build for some of this uh, video actually would have been instead of emergency repair expert, taking improved repair party readiness and still keeping gun feeder. Um, still in certain games where we might need that extra heal, giving it to me if I get to 2 million potential damage, but then allowing me to take gun feeder instead. But I found a lot of the time, this ship is very, very difficult to get to 2 million potential damage. It's often just gonna die too quickly. So I wasn't actually getting that heal and I found I wasn't actually using gun feeder. So I swapped it back up to emergency repair expert. Not a build I recommend, by the way, heavy AP, furious. Uh, that's very, very greedy, uh, very hard to play. But if you wanna try it, it's that is what I have been running. Probably running a more standard tank build is just better uh, overall. Of course, we are going with main gun reload. It is a main gun focus ship after all, aiming systems as well. Spotter aircraft mod one though giving us 30% extra time on this plane. This plane gimmick is the bread and butter here, of course. So getting up to near 85 second action time and then only 105 second cooldown time, you get five of them. That's pretty strong. That's a pretty strong uh, buff to have. So not something you need to charge up like the Satsuma would. And uh, it does recharge relatively quickly as well. And we also get multiple salvos. Uh, before I go, again, the armor. Yeah, 25 on the bow, 32 everywhere else, which is not good armor these days. There's a lot more 32 mil overmatch, just with super ships being in the game, of course. And HE ships, uh, cruisers that will all love to farm you, uh, because that's going to take a lot of damage here as well. Uh, the Citadel can be hit, as, as uh, I have taken some Citadels when I'm broadside, but... It's very waterline to below waterline. It's very, very strange. Um, so when I was broadside on to the Thunderer and Vermont earlier in this video, I think that was a lot of just full pen damage. So it's very weird. It's not as unhittable as Vincent, I would say, which also looks to be similar to this, where it's just kind of below water or waterline. Uh, I would say this one does take more Citadels, especially in the stern. Most of the time, if people hit me back here, I do find that I eat Citadels more. So if you are shooting at one of these, try and hit under the rear guns instead of midship. For whatever reason, I do feel like that takes a little more Citadels, but it's still hard to Citadel, especially closer ranges. Longer ranges, you might get some more plunging fire, um, but the armor is not much to write home about. Personally, I do think it should have a more above water Citadel than this, just because it is so powerful. Vincent as well, these very, very stealthy battleships that are more like battle cruisers with their armor, but then they don't take citadels when they're broadside making mistakes, caught out. I think that's a little bit too much. So maybe if Wargaving feels like this ship needs a nerf, please don't nerf the plane. Please don't nerf the guns. They're too much fun to use. Nerf, nerf the citadel or something. Same with Vincent. Get that citadel up there. Allow ships to be good when used well and uh, punish those ships for mistakes they make. I think that's what I would like to see. But Bungo certainly is a very good battleship. The grind is pretty miserable, though, unfortunately. So if you see this video and you want to get it, I do apologize for the grind that you are about to endure. But at least the tier 10, I think, is worth it. And it's my favorite ship. I, I think it's my favorite ship. Uh, we'll see if that continues into 2024. But for right now, this is kind of my go-to battleship right now. And the one I tend to have the most fun in. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.